Hi, this is Dr. Shinobe Aguilera from Shinobe Cosmetic Dermatology, and we're here to teach my technique with Radius Plus uh, with a 49 year old Hispanic patient. I will show a technique, what I call technique number two, which is slightly different from my HD skull technique with Radius Plus. Um, Sylvia here, she is actually an avid marathon runner, and what she sees is that. Um, she's starting to look a little bit gone, that the mid face is starting to descend and it's starting to see a little bit of jowling. Um, what we're gonna do is, before we, we start the technique, do a little assessment and talking a little bit about uh, ethnic consideration when doing fillers. Uh, as I said earlier, Sylvia is Spanish descent and that could be pretty much anything. Spanish either are Spanish from Spain mixed with native Indian, could be Spanish from Spain mixed with black or all of the above. So it's a lot of European and native Indian and black mix in our countries. By looking at Sylvia, you could see that she has inherited like what I like to call Asian type of cheekbones, which is to her advantage because she has almost two cheekbones, so she's bisychomatic. Why is that to her advantage? It's because she has a lot of bone, and aging has to do with a lot of bone loss, bone remodeling on the cheekbone. As I always say, cheekbones are a sign of youth, beauty, and fertility. So it's my job with Radius Plus to maintain the architecture of a youthful cheekbone. So what you see here are these markings, and this is what I call hinders line. Hinders line is used to try to identify the apex of the cheekbone that for me is the most important part of the cheekbone. I will tell you why later. For assessing Sylvia's cheekbone, you can see that they're very wide, projecting upwards. That's a typical sign of an Asian of native Indian cheekbone. Why is that a concern? Before we start, Sylvia asked me, please do not make me look more square or wider or don't make me look big on the cheekbone. And that's something that Asians or Native Indians or Polish people that have protrusion this way of the cheekbone, they do not want to see. But they definitely need to elevate the mid-face as the mid-face is descending. So we will do in technique number two with radius plus because if I were to do technique number one, I would send to a, her cheekbones. I would create a sharper and she would look more square. Asians or Native Indian, they like to be more oval and not square. So using Hindra's line again, you do a line from mid-tragus to nasa ella, from the lateral aspect of the orbis to the oral commissure, around the area where they meet is the uh, malar eminence of the, the zygoma, which we call the apex. And we'll see how important the apex is when we do this technique. So as you can see, I remove Hindra's line um, just for illustration, usually when I, uh, I work on my patients, I do not like to uh, draw on the face. I'm just trying to um, um, eyeball things and measure things um, and not use so many lines and drawings on the patient's face. I believe that it will hinder my work as an artist. I'll be this, you know, concentrated on the lines and not on what the face is telling me to go. So you can see that I left a dot at the apex of the cheekbone and I kind of like mark the area of the cheekbone. When we do cheekbones on a male or female we have to respect sexual dysmorphism. So on a female the apex is a little bit more superior and lateral than you will find in a male which tends to be a little bit more inferior and medial. The other thing is that when you work with this technique on the zygomatic arch for a female you want to be in the superior aspect of the zygomatic arch. Always remembering that as the zygomatic arch move retrograde, the zygomatic arch start getting thinner and thinner and sometimes it's hard to find when it gets close to the hairline. So again, what we're gonna do with Sylvia, remember she asked that she did not wanna look more wide uh, with fillers. She actually is trying to look more oval and she, so she, uh, she wants to elevate the mid face. So this is something that you see on Native Indian, Polish, or Asian descent individuals. So the technique remains the same. If I were doing a Caucasian, I would be doing the technique perpendicular to the zygoma because I do wanna create some projection in that area. 
But because Sylvia already had that by having some native India in her, we do not need to accentuate the protrusion of the zygoma. So what we're gonna do is we do the same technique, but I'm gonna go at a 45 angle. So it will still tag the skin, but it will make this face look actually more oval, a lot thinner instead of square. Okay, so we identified the apex of the cheekbone on Sylvia. So this technique is really easy. Um, it's going to be depots and it's gonna be done in a particular manner. So I find the apex first, but that's gonna be point of entrance number two. What I'll do after I find the apex, I will pull the skin top. Remember, Sylvia, I'm gonna go more on a 45 degree angle instead of perpendicular to the zygoma at a 90 degree angle because I'm gonna try to make this a little a more oval than a square. So I'm gonna go one centimeter behind the apex. I'm gonna put 0 0.1 of product and massage. Then after that, we will go to the apex and put 0 0.2 cc of product. 0 0.1, 0 0.2. After I do that, we tend to look and see that with 0 0.3 cc, the face treated is a lot higher than the face that is untreated. So able to prove that if we use something like radius plus with a higher G prime, which is basically means that it's stiffer. If you put something stiff and something stiffer like the bone, it will be able to lift the, the mid face a lot better than if you're trying to inject intradermal only. Now, after doing that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna follow Sylvia psychomatic arch all the way to the hairline with aloquats, depot aloquats of 0 0.05. So it's just tagging the skin, pulling back, superior aspect, 0.05, and my job is trying to reach the hairline as much as I can with little aloquas of 0.05. Super periosteal injections. And again, with Sylvia, we're doing it a little bit at an angle because we do not want to make the, skin, the face look wider or square. So my job is just to get as close as I can to the hairline remembering that as I get close to it, the zygomatic arch gets thinner and thinner and sometimes it's a little bit difficult to find. The good thing with Sylvia that hers are so big that we have plenty zygoma to find. So after I reach as close as I can the hairline, then I try to see if I need to elevate the 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 anteromala area and sometimes we do usually we do if this is dropping or we have v-shaped deformity the skin under the eye should look more like you as an umbrella if it are looking more like v as in victor it means that the the anteromala area is dropping from the descent and disappearing the descent of the face from the disappearance of the defect compartment so what we do we will go here lateral aspect of the iris, which is where we'll find um, the male apex. And, um, but because this is a female, we're just gonna put in this area 0 0.1 cc of product, and that's gonna elevate the mid face. After that, I will assess whether we need or not do an OG core on Sylvia, meaning trying to make this a little bit rounded. However, talking about ethnic and gender considerations before you do fillers. Caucasian women tend to have more of an anterior medial projection, not so common with Asians, Native Indian descent, or Hispanics. So again, not everybody will look great with an OG curve. So we have to take that in consideration when we're doing fillers. So I do want to elevate the mid face in this um, Melar area, anterior melar area. So I go lateral aspect of the iris, straight down. I 
and put 0.1 cc of product. And as you can see here, the elevation is really nice comparing to the untreated size, but you can see that she still keeps a more chiseled look than a wider look by just going at this angle. Now with this technique, you can always come back if you feel that like you need to tag the skin better on areas that you, you already been with 0.05 and trying to just create a beautiful cheekbone obeying the rules of cheekbone. It needs to be long, it needs to be oval, and it needs to have an apex at the limbus of the eye. And that's it. This is the uh, technique number two with Radius Plus for the elevation of the mid-face.